Hi everyone and welcome to the July edition of the Arts and Culture Spotlight. There's a lot going on this summer and we're really excited to tell you what's going on at all of our arts and cultural attractions. But first I'd like to introduce two guests. Seated next to me is Angela Cato, our regular here on this show. She's the marketing director for Arts and Culture. And then we also have Wayne Bryan, who is the Music Theater of Wichita director. Did I get that right? Music Theater of Wichita, <laughs> yes. absolutely. Um, well, first, why don't you just tell us a little bit about Music Theater of Wichita? You bet. Music Theater of Wichita has been a tenant of Century Two since 1972. So this is our 43rd summer season. And we produce five large-scale Broadway musicals every summer, utilizing people from Broadway, along with a young, talented company that comes and stays for the whole summer here. This year we began last month with South Pacific and West Side Story, which just closed. And now we're preparing for our July attractions, which are Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, an all-family spectacle written by Andrew Lloyd Webber. And then the local premiere of a recent Broadway show called Catch Me If You Can, mm -hmm. based on the Leonardo DiCaprio, Tom Hanks movie. They will finish out in August with a big tap dance extravaganza called 42nd Street. <laughs> and at the end of that, we'll be announcing our 2015 summer season. Will you tell us a little bit about what each of those shows are about? Surely. Well, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat was written when Andrew Lloyd Webber was a teenager in England. It was the first show he ever wrote. He had just met his friend Tim Rice, and they created this musical out of uh, the first few books of Genesis in the Bible. But it's not a religious show at all. There's a certain spiritual undertone to it, and it tells the story of Joseph and his coat of many colors, the mm -hmm. brothers who were jealous of him, and his journey to Egypt, and finally being reunited with his family and uh, forgiving them for the things they'd done to him. It's a story of forgiveness, but it reflects all the kinds of music that Andrew Lloyd Webber was listening to as a teenager in England in the 1960s. So there's a Calypso number, there's a Country Western number, <laughs> the Pharaoh of Egypt turns out to be Elvis. It's a silly, uh, high energy, really funny and fun show. It's the third time we've produced it at Music Theater and it's always extremely popular. Mm -hmm. Wayne, what mm -hmm. goes into choosing your season shows? Well, we try to find a variety so that our audience who waits all year for yeah. us to show up gets taken to a new place every other week, a different time period, different style of show. Yeah. And then we also choose it for our young performing company. We audition all over the country. We get about 4,000 pictures and resumes each year. Oh and we narrow that down to the 1,000. We'll have time to audition. Yes. We go to six cities and audition those 1,000 people. And out of that, we select, you know, this year we have 32 who are here yes. for the whole summer. So from 4,000 down to 32, you get a really high level of quality uh, performer. And we try to give them a range of experiences in the summer, too. So South Pacific, they had to sing. Rodgers and Hammerstein uh -huh. style, West Side Story, they had to dance, Jerome Robbins, uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber's Joseph has a lot of pop music styles, Catch Me If You Can is set in the 1960s and they all play a lot of different kinds of yeah. 1960s characters and for 42nd Street they all have to tap dance. So <laughs> it's variety for the audience and variety for our performers. Well, a music theater has quite a reputation in Wichita and that, you know, most of our performers here head on to Broadway in New York. We have an awfully uh, good track record of helping <laughs> young people train and make connections and then they're on Broadway next season. Right now we have about 40 of our young alumni in Broadway shows now. So people here in Wichita really get top-notch performances. They get to see them here first. <laughs> have that. Well, I'm just curious, you know, is this something that other cities do too, or is this unique to Wichita? Sadly, there are not very many cities that do this anymore. Usually, if a civic auditorium has a musical show in it, it's a tour that has come from other cities and that sits down in your theater, takes money out of your community, and goes back to its city of origin. What we do, we have a three and a half million dollar budget that we must raise every year to put on these shows and pay our rent and pay the rights to the shows, all that. And we raise uh, that locally. About half comes from ticket sales, the rest from other fundraisers and corporate sponsors mm -hmm. and the, the good citizens here donate. And it's, it's a wonderful thing to see how much support there is. And we try to make sure that 70% of that three and a half million gets spent back into the Wichita economy. We buy our wood here, our steel, our fabric. Most cities don't have this anymore. It's easier to just bring in a tour. And most cities don't have a facility like Century 2 that has a carpentry shop, a paint frame, costume shops, rehearsal spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're very, very fortunate. And the kind of organization we are was very much shaped by what we were offered within Century 2. Mm -hmm. 
And Angela, I know you get a behind the scenes look since your office is at Century too. It's wonderful. The basement is filled with carpentry and they're making the costumes and it's a lot of activity. A lot of young people. Yes, we get them from all over. Every shop is headed by a professional in that field and then we have college folks and high school folks who are learning how to do this. Yeah, I'm amazed with the sets I see down there. I like they made that? Mm -hmm. Now what do you do with the sets after you're done with we the We have two warehouses and we own now about 60 or 70 complete shows, sets, props, costumes, and they're rented to other theaters around North America. That's why I was thinking, because mm -hmm. I thought those things are too good just to be used once and then they used to just again. throw them away after every season oh. and we found space <laughs> and we've made them better and better through the years. So it's been a nice calling card for Wichita and other cities. So how would you gauge your season so far? How's it going? Well, so far so good. Sales really good for the overall season tickets and then South Pacific went really well and West Side Story went terrifically. Mm -hmm. Joseph's always really popular. Mm -hmm. the, the funny one to watch will be Catch Me If You Can because people haven't seen it and they don't know it as well. But it's a really sexy, funny, tuneful show, and I think it's going to go over really well. Who are some of your leads this year? Well, uh, we, as I say, we get folks from Broadway, and we get uh -huh. folks who have uh, been in our system. Two of our leads in West Side Story, Kevin Munhall and Sheena Ann Morris, actually grew up in Wichita. They were part of our teen program. They went uh, to the Jester Awards, where we uh -huh. honor, you know, they both won Jester Awards when they were in high school. They both ended up going to the University of Michigan, which has a tremendous music theater program. Oh, okay. Then they both went to New York, and they were both in the Broadway cast of Anything Goes. Oh, my and Sheena has also been on Broadway in Nice Work If You Can Get It, Annie, um, Cinderella, and West Side Story. Okay. So uh, you see Broadway folks here on their way there, and then after they've they achieved it, back. they come back. <laughs> It's nice. It says something to the quality of what you offer here. Well, and it's very encouraging for the young people to see mm -hmm. people who came through the ranks as they did mm -hmm. and have made the gold, uh, uh, the gold ring, which is being on Broadway. Say there's some youth out there who want to kind of get involved. Are there opportunities through the summer to kind of see Absolutely. youth behind the scenes? Well, most of our young people have already auditioned for us okay. or applied for us. So we, I think we're pretty well staffed for this summer. Uh -huh. But our website, mtwichita.org, We'll always have information about job opportunities and audition times and cities. So not too early to get ready for next season. Not next too year. early at all. And come see what we do so you get a feel for <laughs> what you might be involved with. Well, yeah, and tell us a little bit about 42nd Street in that show. Well, that's the one in August. Mm -hmm. And as I say, Catch Me If You Can is based on the, the movie. And it's got a great set of songs by the folks who wrote Hairspray, mm -hmm. which was also set in the 1960s. Uh, and then 42nd Street was based on a 1933 early talky movie, and it created songs like uh, We're in the Money and uh, Lullaby of Broadway and uh, things that are still with us uh, in, our, in our tunes that we hear on the radio. Oh. Uh, and it's uh, just wall-to-wall -wall tab dancing. The gentleman <laughs> who's directing it for us was in the original 1980 Broadway cast, and he knows it inside out. He really cares. And it's, for this is the first time we've done this show where we were able to create all new scenery and costumes, and it's spectacular. Now, tell people about ticket information. 24-7, you can go to our website and pick out seats and uh, commit to coming to see us. That's at <laughs> mtwichita.org. Or most weekdays, you can call our box office, 265-3107. Okay. And they can help you uh, decide what you might want to see and where you want to sit. Tickets are on sale for all shows? Well, all the remaining ones. All the remaining <laughs> ones, all at once. Okay. And there are some seats available for all of them. Well, so, well, they do go fast, so people should mm -hmm. uh, get there early and, and make sure mm -hmm. they get their tickets. And then for next year, do you offer season passes or anything like that? We do. We sell season tickets, and I would say about 70% of our audience any night is a season ticket holder. Mm -hmm. We have about 10,000 season ticket holders, and they're very loyal, and we try never to disappoint them. Do you have mailing lists that they can get on to get information about this? Again, our website has a place where you can sign on if you like. All right, wonderful. And then are these shows appropriate for kids? Is it family There's family? a rating on each one uh, you can go to the website and see uh, Joseph the dream coat we say is g-rated for the whole family catch me if you can we've given it a PG 13 <laughs> there's no nudity there's really no profanity but there are saucy situations okay. that we thought you might as well be warned mm -hmm. and then 42nd Street is another all-family musical all right we try to give a variety we try to give you the same variety that you might have on a weekend in New York uh, an older show a newer show some for the whole family some for adults well, Wayne, thanks so much for being here. It's been really fun and exciting to hear about all your great shows. I enjoyed it. Thanks for asking. All right. And as we leave you, we will show you a sneak peek of some of Music Theater Wichita's upcoming shows.
Music Theater of Wichita proudly presents Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Bright, clever, and fun for the whole family, this delightful and inspiring show is the first musical ever created by Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice. Returning by popular demand for seven performances only, July 9th through 13th at Century 2. Get your tickets now. Call 265-3107 or visit mtwichita.org. Music Theater of Wichita, where you see the Broadway stars of today and tomorrow. Music Theater of Wichita proudly presents the regional premiere of Catch Me If You Can, the exciting new Broadway musical based on the smash hit film. It's the true story of Frank Abagnale Jr., who managed to impersonate a doctor, a lawyer, and an airplane pilot while staying just ahead of the FBI. Lively and sexy, it plays for seven performances only, July 23rd through 27th at Century 2. Call 265-3107 or visit mtwichita.org. Rated PG-13. And welcome back, everybody. Looks like there's a lot of exciting shows to check out with Music Theater. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't wait to get my seat. And I know you guys also have more fun events coming up at C2. Absolutely. Century 2 is hosting the American Indian Festival, which is presented by the Mid-America All Indian Center. This is going to be the fourth year for the festival. Very exciting time. And there's going to be a lot of things that tie into the history and culture. And what kind of things can people expect when they show up? Well, absolutely. We want, first and foremost, everyone is welcome to come in. There's going to be a powwow, Indian fine art market, youth activities, and Indian tacos and meat pies, which is always gets people <laughs> lined up for them. It's really a great time to come in. I think it's things that many people may not have experienced before. So come in. Um, the dancers, as you see them around, ask them first. You might be able to ask a few questions. They love to talk about their culture. And it's just a great time to see the song, history, uh, culture and dance of all the people for what Wichita is named after. And is there a cost associated? There is a cost. It's $5 for adult tickets and $3 for youth. There's also special prices for military and two-day passes available. And then where can people go to get tickets? You can buy them at the door the day of or you can go to Wichita T-I-X, WichitaTix.com. Information's there about the festival. Also some links to go to the Indian Center site to see a full schedule of events and a little bit of a sneak peek of what you're going to see so that way when you come in you're a little prepared and you can kind of see um, have an idea of what you're going to be able to do once you get there. Mm -hmm. Anything else people should know about the festival? It's just a great opportunity. Um, the Indian Center is a facility that's very active all year round and we can talk we'll talk about some things they're doing in a minute mm -hmm. but it's really um, something that you don't have an opportunity to go to very many times and so taking the chance to bring out the kids. It's a great family event. There's going to be some live animals there. We have the horses from Cowtown, mm -hmm. some birds from the Eagle Valley Raptor Center, and also a miniature horse, just some fun things for the kids. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it gives an opportunity to have some fun. The, the children are being um, exposed to a diverse um, environment, and so they are learning about this, but having fun. So it's just a great experience all around for parents and kids. Well, I know people are also really excited about the exhibits you guys have going on right now with aviation. Absolutely. The Indians in Aviation exhibit opened not too long ago, and it's going so strong. We actually wrapped up an exhibit this weekend that gave people another opportunity to come in, view it for half price, and also see the 90-minute film that's associated with it in a screening. Right now, um, the Indian Center did commission a full-length film. It's only on a loop inside the museum during the exhibit, so it's a kind of special opportunity to be able to see the entire one. It is for sale in the Indian Center gift shop, though. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit more about the film. The film is made by local filmmakers. Again, it was commissioned by the Indian Center, so it's a one-of-a-kind. And it really um, has interviews with Indians um, who haven't had their stories told before. They're talking about when they, come, when they came to Wichita, during World War II to build airplanes at Boeing, Cessna, and we're really working behind the scenes of the war effort. And so they're, they have the opportunity to kind of put their stories on record, have it documented for future generations, and then also um, kind of tell the stories of how these Indians from all these tribes came together and in their intertribal community led to the creation of the Indian Center. So it's really a great story. Yeah, wonderful story to tell. Yeah, it's really great. And people um, are very excited in, in both the general population and the Indian community that these stories, it's, it's enlightening to them. It's like, wow, I mean, mm -hmm. we knew that the aviation history, but we didn't ever knew it from this perspective. Uh -huh. And then what else does the exhibit include? The exhibit also includes some timelines. There's also some um, 
visual dis exhibits with mm -hmm. it that kind of leads people through w um, the timeline of the movie. There's also some um, models borrowed from the Kansas Aviation Museum and some other clubs. So it's um, it's pretty it's pretty good to see. Mm -hmm. And I've heard they've also got some fun classes. Absolutely, the Indian Center. One aspect of it that continues to grow is its arts and craft classes that focus on different American Indian projects. You'll be you know making things that have been made for generations and you learn the techniques. Mm -hmm. And coming up on July 23rd from 7 to 9 p.m. is the beaded feather earring class. It's actually taught by a teenager who is an American Indian artist. So it's a great opportunity if you um, adults and teens would come together and want to make it. So there's a couple of earring classes coming up, but if you keep track on the calendar on the Indian Center's website, which is theindiancenter.org, there, there's more coming up and we do a lot of dream cutcher classes, um, some um, finger woven belt classes, a lot of different things. So do you have to register for the classes through the website or how You does that can work? register by calling the Indian Center 350-3340 or you can email one of the staff members and the information's on the website. And speaking of classes, City Arts is another great place to learn. Absolutely, and you're learning a wide variety of things at City Arts. Right now they are starting they're gearing up, in fact, for the second half of the summer classes. So right now you could um, register for such thing as filmmaking, um, DSLR cameras, there's also some um, kiln work with glass fusing, a lot of different things for adults, and then the kids always have camps and like youth pottery and youth sculpture to, to choose from. What would you say to the people who are like, well, you know, I'm not really an artist, I'm not that good at that stuff. I mean, are these classes for everybody or do you have yeah. to kind of know what you're doing? You don't have to go. You, you, can come, you, don't, you can come in clueless and we'll be happy. <laughs> and it's just getting in there, having fun, working with your hands and your mind and your creativity. It's just meant to be an enlightening and a fun experience. Yes, you can come in there and get as serious as you want, but you can also come and just kind of learn something new. You're never too old to just kind of be a little daring, get out, and it's an opportunity. You can meet new people in your classes, have a little fun with mingling, and just really um, do something different rather than just staying home at night and watching TV. Yeah, you might find a new hobby. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, a lot of people have come not knowing anything about the art, and they, they leave, and they want to start their own art businesses. Mm -hmm. It really is something that you might, um, don't underestimate yourself. Mm -hmm. because there's there's art inside everyone it's just what level that you want to engage it and so these classes are for all age levels ages six and up mm -hmm. and when you get to age 16 you're you can take the adult classes so really it opens up a kind of a new realm of possibilities right now with the camps going on that the kids are in the middle of art core and every week a new um, theme starts in art core and each of them have individual registration and many of them include um, a trolley ride to an attraction that week. So I would invite parents, if they're looking for some great positive things for their children to do over spring break during these weeks, it, the, each of the sessions, are, I believe, are $165, and that's mm -hmm. for a full week from 9 to 4. You can't beat it. Yeah, that's a pretty good deal, and yeah. you get a unique, fun experience. Absolutely. I mean, we're, we're going to be rounding it up with digital art on one week, fiber art on one week, and theater um, on the last week in August 4th um, kicks off the last week of the art core. And so how do people sign up for camps and classes? You can actually sign up online wichitatix.com tix.com or you can call City Arts directly 350-3245. They should probably hurry up and do that before the classes and camps fill up. Yeah, we, with every week they get a little bit more word of mouth out there and they're filling up pretty good. Mm -hmm. Now I know there's also a lot going on over at Cowtown these days. You guys just launched a new summer campaign. We did <laughs> and it's it's a fun campaign and it's one we're not taking ourselves too seriously about it's Cowtown Wow uh -huh. and, it, and it really is just what it says you go out there and you find your own Wow moment and it's like ah oh, that's kind of cool Wow I hadn't seen that before and it's just something to come out and rediscover Cowtown if you haven't been there for a while or to discover it if you've never attended and I'm sure there's people out there who are very familiar with hashtags and others who are not. So will you explain a little bit more about what you're asking? Yes, we want people when they <laughs> visit Cowtown to be all over social media and tell people, everyone they know about their experience. So using the hashtag, which is the pound sign, mm -hmm. Cowtown Wow, at the end of a tweet or at the end of your Facebook post, 
And we're going to keep an eye out for everyone who uses that hashtag, and we may be retweeting you, um, sharing your posts, and your pictures may come up in one of our uh, television commercials or Facebook um, ads. That could be very fun. <laughs> it could be. We're really having fun with hashtags. We talked a little bit about the Indian Center. If you do that, if you go to the Indian Festival, if you go to the classes, use the hashtag My Indian Center. Mm -hmm. And really, we can start these kind of community conversations. You can look into the section where all those hashtag posts um, fall to and see other people um, talking about the same things you're interested in, and it kind of creates a community. Yeah, you could learn some other fun wow moments and then go experience them yourself. <laughs> Actually, I mean, it's really an amazing opportunity. Where else could you go from busy highways and all of a sudden park your car, go behind a small hill, and all of a sudden you're stuck in a loop with 1865 to 1880? That in itself, I mean, just imagining that we have that asset here all the time in Wichita, it's pretty amazing. And I know people come from all over the world to check it out. Oh my goodness, there are so many international visitors, especially from the Asian countries. They come over there and they're so, the Wild West is such a foreign concept to them. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, and it's so unique to us. And it's a real proud moment. They see this, um, I mean, these real buildings that were moved from original sites to Cowtown, they see these artifacts. There's 10,000 artifacts in Cowtown's collection. And it's, it's just something when you look at it, you go, okay, you know, we have something great. I mean, it's, wow. Mm -hmm. Can you find a list of events or activities on the website? Yes, you can. If you go to oldcowtown.org, click on Cowtown Wow section. It really lists um, the daily activities that go on, gunfights, carriage rides, um, saloon hours with the snack bar and sarsaparilla. And then it also answers some commonly asked questions by visitors. Um, you, the staff, it's funny because the staff gets asked, you know, were there actually any Wild West figures who lived in Wichita? And the truth is that there were, that um, Billy the Kid and his family lived here, mm -hmm. and also Wyatt Earp um, for one year. So you have some fun. That's <laughs> very cool. It, it is. Um, there's also things, you know, some funny little facts you can talk to people about. Um, Cowtown actually sends more, sells more than 8,000 bottles of sarsaparilla a year. So it's real, you know, you can't leave there without going into the saloon and getting your own bottle. Um, it's just really a great attraction, open um, Tuesday through Sunday. They only close on Mondays to reset their time travel clock and it's just any time that you have some time to come by and stop and enjoy it. I was thinking it would be fun for stay-at-home moms or dads to get Absolutely. out of the house and come check it out. Absolutely. I mean, it's a great outdoor venue. So you have a really nice summer day, you want something. There's 23 acres at Cowtown. I didn't realize it was that big, and I work for the city. <laughs> I know, 23 <laughs> acres. I mean, so you can really get there. If it gets a little warm, we have air-conditioned buildings. Sit and stay for a while. And have a sarsaparilla. And have a sarsaparilla. <laughs> it's just a great venue for the summertime. You can actually buy memberships where you can have unlimited visits throughout the summer. It's, it's just a really great thing. And there's, there's live animals on grounds. And, of course, we have our costumed interpreters who stay in character and will um, wow your socks off with what they know. Mm -hmm. Anything else you wanted to add? I just think Cowtown's great. I really want people to, to think about um, their social media. The best way to get the word out about this great asset is to, to tweet and Facebook. I love it, and we watch it regularly and share us your wow moments. All right. Well, Angela, thanks so much for being here and Thank getting you, us Lord. caught up on what's going on this summer. Absolutely. See you again soon. And thanks for watching this edition.